Hello, I'm Don Rigby with Avanti, continuing the series on grouting greats. And today, I'm with Dr. Raymond Henn, an individual with 40 years of experience in contracting and design consulting. And it's fair to say that he knows a lot about dirt, rock, and about uh, ground improvement and grouting. Um, I'd like to ask a question. What do you see as the major drivers in our industry? Well, uh, if you look at the industry as a whole, in particular North America, uh, we, I have a phrase I use is all the good ground is taken. By that I mean that uh, over the years the uh, uh, low hanging fruit, the e easy pickings have uh, all been uh, used up in the way of the ground. Uh, it's one factor. Another factor is we have an aging infrastructure particularly evident on both coasts of the United States and in the Rust Belt area. And then we have a, an expanding population and uh, with expanding populations comes a need for uh, things like water, potable water, drinking water, and uh, also sewage. So uh, all these factors combined uh, you know, make for a demanding uh, environment for construction. Greg, can you be more specific about specific, uh, about specific infrastructure? Well, you know, infrastructure, normally when you get under the ground, anything below ground, and you know, while buildings are above ground, they have foundations. Uh, your home quite often has a basement or a foundation. And certainly um, uh, even a bridge, which we think of as an above ground facility, has uh, some fairly substantial um, foundation elements. And of course, there's the structures that are purely underground, i.e., uh, you know, tunnels and mines and what have you. So as soon as you break the ground surface, you're into the unknown uh, and uh, <laughs> geology and groundwater and things like that take over. Can you help us understand when to grout, when not to grout? Well, I mean, I think that determination needs to be made early on and the earlier the better. Uh, the owner, in conjunction with their engineer, uh, needs to, you know, fully understand the site, the site characteristics, be they the geology and the groundwater conditions, and based on that, uh, they need to uh, design accordingly and uh, you know accommodate uh, those needs early on. And the earlier they can do it in the design process, the better off they'll be. You know, Ray, it, I hear you say this often and frequent. You you learn every day, even with all your experience. What advice would you have for upcoming? engineers and consultants and contractors who choose to compete and serve the geotechnical market? Well, uh, I think that the technology, both in products, methodologies, our understanding of ground behavior is constantly changing, constantly improving. Uh, I think Avanti uh, is an example of a, an evolving uh, technology or a product line. Uh, and uh, some of the excavation methods, particularly in, in tunneling and underground, are um, changing uh, rapidly. And all of these factors, um, you know, uh, make for a dynamic uh, situation where uh, both young people entering the industry as well as practitioners that have been in the industry for a while, you know, need to stay on top of this because it's pretty dynamic and. Uh, it's moving right along. You need to keep up with the times. That would include technology, techniques, and methodologies, right? That's correct. You often find yourself in the middle of the engineer, the contractor, and the owner. How can you add to the collaborative qualities of a project? I think education, not necessarily formal education, I mean, that's important. I'm mean, meaning in, at the college or university level. But I think there are a lot of um, programs. Um, Avanti's Grout School is one of them. Um, there are programs that are being developed and implemented and improved all the time at uh, universities. Uh, for example, the Colorado School of Mines um, has a, uh, a big emphasis on underground construction and tunneling. And um, all indications are that um, they're one of, they realize that one of the big uh, movers in that is grounding and, and um, grounding and ground improvement. Final piece of wisdom, what would you like to share uh, as, as a parting thought? I think that um, 
all the parties and the parties to a project, that's the owner, the, um, the engineer, the contractors, need to take um, grouting and ground improvement very seriously. Uh, it can be, uh, if it's handled correctly and, and in a timely manner, you can save yourself money, time, and a lot of grief. If it's um, not dealt with properly, uh, you can only uh, add to your cost uh, scheduling issues and your misery. So it, it um, I think quite often um, it's just uh, people are out to build a structure, whatever that structure is, be it a tunnel, building, um, housing structure, and that's their focus. And I think that um, geology and groundwater have such can have such a pr profound effect on uh, all the aspects of that project that uh, um, they need to look at it, take it seriously, and things like uh, grouting and ground improvement need to be explored. Raymond, I think uh, I think you're one of a kind, and I thank you for your time today. Thank you.